Hey everyone, welcome to another installment of Harry Potter Theory. In today's video, we're going to be discussing another theory within the greater wizarding world. That's right, I'm excited to say that today's video is another theory regarding the recently released trailer for the upcoming film Fantastic Beasts The Secrets of Dumbledore. While there are a lot of great theories that have come about from the trailer, many of them, rightfully so, focus on imagined or suspected events that will take place in the film, set to be released this spring. Today's theory, however, is more an analysis of what the presentation of a certain character may say about who he is and who he will become within the Fantastic Beasts franchise. As you've likely deduced from the title of this video, I'm, of course, speaking of Credence Barebone, allegedly born Aurelius Dumbledore, brother to Albus Dumbledore. That is, if the word of Gellert Grindelwald can be trusted. And so, if you've watched The Secrets of Dumbledore trailer, which I assume all of you have, then you've likely noticed that Credence seems to have gotten a new look since the last couple of films. That is, in both Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, and Fantastic Beasts The Crimes of Grindelwald, Credence sports two distinctively cropped haircuts, which in themselves are actually quite different from one another. In the first film, Credence has a rather unflattering bowl cut, which was laughed at on the internet through various memes and the like. Poor bloke. In any case, it can be assumed that Mary Lou Barebone gave him this extremely unattractive cut, which he then sheds in the second movie in favour of an even shorter, thankfully plainer, and let's be honest, more presentable haircut. This transition between the two looks was likely to signify the passage of time that took place between the two films, and the fact that Mary Lou is no longer alive and in control of his hair, or his life for that matter, in the second film. So, in a way, his change in hairstyle can be viewed as a representation of him breaking free from Mary Lou and her mental and physical abuse. That said, as we all know from the new trailer, Credence's hair has since gone through another, more dramatic transition, as it's now down to his shoulders in length. Now, other than the fact that the character of Credence, or perhaps the actor who portrays Credence, Ezra Miller, may simply like having longer hair, what could this change in style mean? Well, as many fans have commented, Credence's new look is rather reminiscent of another Harry Potter character known for his shoulder length, Raven Locks, Severus Snape. In fact, I've actually seen many a query wondering if Credence Barebone could, in fact, be related to Severus, rather than Albus Dumbledore, as Grindelwald claims. However, there is lots of evidence throughout the larger Wizarding World and Harry Potter universe to disprove this theory, so I can't say that I believe there is substance to there being any relation between Credence and Snape, other than a passing resemblance and the same haircut. But I must admit that I do believe the similarities in their appearance may have been created on purpose. Here's why. One of the many wonderful things about the Harry Potter series is the depth of the characters. Witches and wizards were often presented as having multiple facets of humanity that make them more relatable as, well, humans, albeit with magical abilities. Albus Dumbledore is, of course, a wonderful example of this. He is most often portrayed as a great hero and mentor within the series, but as we all know, he wasn't always so good or on the right side. As you may recall, growing up, Albus had a close relationship with Gellert Grindelwald and shared many of his fanatical, anti-muggle sentiments. There's also lots to suggest that perhaps he doesn't always make the right decision. For instance, many fans and Harry Potter characters fiercely believe that he should have shared what he knew about Harry's inevitable self-sacrifice with Harry himself, Snape included. But alas, I digress. Severus Snape is, of course, another great example of a complex Harry Potter character with many layers. Throughout many of the Harry Potter novels and films, he is indeed depicted as a villain. But, as we progress through the series, lots about Snape and his motives are uncovered, revealing that he was actually a decent person, a wizard who was in love with the good and moral witch, Harry's mother, Lily Evans, who simply wanted to belong and was lured to the power and camaraderie of the Dark Arts, but who ultimately chose to help those who opposed Lord Voldemort. Though, I suppose you could say that all the good he did was in the name of his own self-interest, that is, his love for Lily. But good he did do, regardless of his motives. 
So, with all that in mind, it would seem that Severus Snape was an anti-hero within Harry Potter, that is, a protagonist or central character who lacks certain conventional, heroic qualities, such as morality and honesty. And so, I would say that, in a similar way, Credence Barebone seems to have been set up to be the anti-hero of the Fantastic Beasts series. He is not, by nature, an evil person. His existence as an obscurial is completely circumstantial. That is, his magic was repressed due to Mary Lou Barebone's abuse towards him throughout his upbringing, which resulted in the creation of a dark, parasitical, magical force, otherwise known as an obscurus. So, although Credence harbors this Obscurus, which is incredibly destructive when released, it would seem that Credence never intentionally releases its dark magical force. It only comes about when he loses control of his emotions or feels extreme distress. So, again, he isn't wreaking havoc or bringing about destruction with evil intentions. He seems to just be a young man who longs to understand who he is, to belong somewhere, and discover where he came from. Q. Grindelwald. Either because he believes that Credence is actually a member of the Dumbledore family, or because he simply wants to take advantage of his magical power, Grindelwald has spent the better part of the last two Fantastic Beasts movies trying to persuade Credence to join his cause. It would seem that Grindelwald has done so with the intention of having Credence eventually challenge Albus. If Credence is a Dumbledore, he may be the only one strong enough to defeat his brother, aside from Grindelwald, who has taken part in a blood pact with Albus and likely can't duel him himself. So, after guiding Credence through various discoveries throughout the films, by the end of The Crimes of Grindelwald, Gellert has successfully seduced Credence into joining him. As it all unfolds, it appears as though Credence feels he's left with little choice but to go with Grindelwald if he ever wants to belong. And although he seems to quite willingly join Grindelwald in that ring of bright blue fire at the end of the second film, Thanks to Queenie Goldstein's legitimacy abilities, we know that Credence isn't completely convinced that he's made the right decision in following Grindelwald and his acolytes, as she reveals to Gellert in the final scene of the movie, you need to be careful. He's not sure he made the right choice. Be very gentle with him. So, we have a young, powerful wizard who's chosen a path filled with dark magic in an effort to belong somewhere, and yet he remains hesitant as to whether it was the right thing to do leaving valued relationships with those such as Nagini behind. Remind you of anyone? Why, yes, I do believe that sounds an awful lot like our dear Severus Snape. For this reason, I wouldn't be surprised if eventually, Credence makes a choice or two that's moral and good in nature, aligning himself with those who oppose Grindelwald, making him the anti-hero of the series in the same way Snape was for Harry Potter. Perhaps, if it serves his interests, he will even fully switch sides and fight alongside his friend and former ally, Nagini, and his alleged brother, Albus, in order to defeat Grindelwald. I suppose we'll have to wait until April, or longer, to find out. So, there you have it. Severus Snape and Credence Barebone may not be related in the familial sense, but I sure do believe that their physical similarities offer clues into the character development and story arc of Credence in the Fantastic Beasts series. What do you think? Is this way too far-fetched for you? Do you even see resemblance between Snape and Credence? Perhaps you just think that Ezra Miller likes wearing his hair long? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Until next time, you don't want me as your enemy.